A Squared Entertainment and AOL are teaming up to create educational webisodes for kids. One of the short features is legendary investor Warren Buffett, and it's titled Secret Millionaires Club. And Mr. Buffett joins us right now from Washington, D.C. Good morning, Mr. Buffett. Thanks for being here. It's good morning to you. I, I, I like this Pleasure. idea, Mr. Buffett, because I have three young boys, and I think we need to teach them a little bit about finance. Tell me why you decided to do this. Well, Andy Hayward is a terrific at telling a story. I mean, he, he's, done, he's done it with thousands of episodes with children over the years, and I was particularly impressed a few years ago when he did something called Liberty's Kids. And if, if your three children haven't seen it, it, it's a great story about, about how this country came about in, in, in the late 18th century. And, and uh, 45 episodes. But it was not only good for kids. I, I relearned American history in a great way through that. So I've been very impressed with Andy. And when he came up with this idea that maybe we could help young people like your children develop better habits uh, for their lifetime in terms of how they thought about money and savings and, and, and their own self-worth, investing in themselves and all of that, I just thought it was a terrific idea, and, uh, and here we are. Yeah, a, a favorite in the Glick household is uh, the FDIC chairs, Rock Brock and the Saving Shock, because I'm trying to keep, teach them what compound interest really is. You know, Warren, there's a lot of people who would suggest that perhaps a lot of adults need to watch this to get sort of comfortable, re-educated about how to control their personal finances, particularly what we've gone through over the past couple of years. Is that important that we empower ourselves to take a little bit more ownership? That's a terrific idea. Because just like I relearned some American history, I, I, I do think adults can use some of the lessons that, that we'll be trying to work into the stories uh, for the young children. Uh, because the, the lessons are timeless. I mean, if you, if you develop good financial habits, you know, that will last a lifetime, it makes life easier in all kinds of ways. And if you, if you to the uh, contrary, if, if you get bad financial habits, and I hear from people every day that write me about the problems they've gotten into with credit cards or something of the sort, it can ruin your life. I mean, it, it hurts marriages, it hurts health. So it, it's really important to get the right ideas early. And habits, you know, they, they say the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. So you want to get the right habits early. And if we can help some young people do that, you know, I, I, I'll, I will salute Andy for getting that job done. Well said. Let, let's talk a little bit about some of the habits uh, that you've put into, into action. You guys, as I recall, had a fair amount of cash on the books at the end of the quarter. I'm curious, how are you spending it? Are you still investing at these levels? Because we've had a remarkable rally off of those March lows. Yeah, if I, if I can find things that I think are reasonably priced and that I think I understand, I buy them. I don't, I, I don't attempt to time markets at all. I, I never give a thought to timing markets. I do price individual companies. And if, so if something looks attractive to me, and they're way, it's way more likely to be attractive at 9,000 on the Dow than at 12 or 13,000 on the Dow, I'm likely to find more things. I buy them. I buy them not because I think they're going to go up next week or next month or next year, but because I think I'm bound to make a lot of money uh, over time. I just don't know when it's going to happen. So pricing is key, and obviously prices are somewhat higher now than they, a fair amount higher than they were in, in early March. But, you know, I would much rather own uh, equities that I understand and like than, than have my money in fixed dollar investments because I think the value of the dollar will decline over time. A lot of people talk about that initial Goldman Sachs investment and whether or not you will consider redeeming the existing warrants. Have you thought about that, or has Goldman tried to consider paying back their initial investment with you? Because it's, it's a good investment for you or a little rich for them. That's, that's right, but don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep that between ourselves. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting about a, almost $1,000 a minute. Uh, our preferred <laughs> stock investment. So I, I try not to answer the phone if I think Goldman's calling. Uh, uh, but the warrants, uh, we will hold the warrants. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it, uh, I, I can't say you know, what, for sure what I'll do at any time of year in the future, two years in the future. But my, every, uh, every, every instinct in my body tells me that uh, uh, we will want to hold those warrants until they're very close to their expiration date, at which time we'll end up exercising them in all probability. But, uh, but uh, no, the preferred pays us the dividend, and the warrants are going to make us the money. That's exactly.